Okay, hello to everybody that's out there. This is just going to be a quick uh, little video. Right now nobody's watching, but I know you'll watch later, but just a quick video on me mixing a little bit of this stuff in here because a couple of members asked, like, they don't understand the concept of how to put that in there, and I totally understand that too because at first I was, like, not really knowing how the, you know, additives or whatever you add to it work. So, but right now... Um, I'll go ahead and show you how um, I do that. So for right now, we'll put a little bit of this white paint in here. And I usually get a lot of the white paint because um, I tend to use a lot of it. I tend to mix a lot of that in there. So right now, I'm just adding a little bit of the white paint to the cup. And this is a tiny Dixie cup. So... I'll do half a cup and sometimes I'll do less than half a cup, but it's filled up right now. And this is the oil and there's a lot of oil still in here and I barely use just like about maybe a few drops. There's no proper measurement. I mean, I'll show you how I'm putting it in here. I'm just kind of going, mm, maybe two squeezes, maybe three. I mean, the more you squeeze in there, the more oily it'll be. It's not gonna really mess things up. But again, it's the white paint, just a little half of the Dixie cup full, and a couple of squeezes. There's no exact measurement on that. And then I'm gonna mix in with it is just a couple color shifts. So I just wanted to make it easy and kind of show people the color shift because other people were asking about it. And it's just a metallic kind of, I guess it's like a it reflects different colors. So when it's blended together and you turn the object or whatever you're looking at, it gives it a cool view. So now that the oil's in there, I'm gonna mix that in there. And this is the way I'm doing it. You don't have to do it this way. You could do it any way you want, but usually um, you'll mix the separate colors in separate cups. And that's only if you're like really mixing things together um, or if you just want to be able to pour them differently. You know, I'm just showing you the easier way because I don't want to make it difficult. I mean, but you could get kind of adventurous with the mixing different things with every color. But right now I'm just, I always try to do step by step and that way I start with just pouring colors. So I did that for like a good month or two. And then I started adding in um, additives and mediums. And it really taught me a lot because I already knew how the color blended, but just being able to practice and you know use different types of paint, I learned a lot about paint before I even started adding stuff in. But this stuff, I totally got by accident like maybe more than a month back. And I was telling everybody, get frizzies, but this stuff is actually a little bit, I like the way it works. And I don't like to buy the stuff that everybody else uses. I like to do things different, so that's how I came upon this. And so right now I'm gonna use this cup. So there's a separate cup involved. You're gonna put a little bit of this in there, and you can do it however you want, but I use put the white, a little bit of white at the bottom. Then I layer the colors. Now you can do a color and then you could do white, or you could do a couple colors and then layer the white in there. You know, there's really, all kinds of ways to do it and no one way is better than the another you know because we could put because no matter what you do you are not going to get the same exact pour as somebody else you could get close to that look but it is not going to be the exact look like how you can paint a rock and you can do the same thing you really can't do that with pouring you can get close to the colors but it's not going to be the exact flow it's always going to be different so i'm just kind of layering these up and then I'll pour it. And that's really pretty much the gist of it. Beginning of this, I showed how I mix these colors in together. But like I said before, you can kind of get crazy. You can mix this into all the colors. You can use different mediums. I mean, I'll show you some mediums I have. I haven't tried this iridescent one either, so I'm just playing with it. Certain ways to use it, but um, just use a tiny bit of my next pour just to try that out too. So I'll try to do a little tutorial on those. And these are my go-tos for um, sealing. So when I usually talk about these, I brush them on. I love this because I don't have to spray and inhale any toxic chemicals in my garage. And I could do it any time of the year because it does not matter on the weather. So I really need bigger things of these because this goes pretty quickly. But the Duraclear, I think one huge thing like this, I could probably do about 400 or 500 rocks. I mean, it, you use just a tiny bit of the Duraclear, but the triple thick goes pretty quick. Okay. Now the rocks in the cup, the rocks in the cup, the, the colors in the cup, 
Now I'm gonna pour them. So initially it was just to show you how to blend these, mix them together. Just wanted to make it easier since everybody was kind of asking about that. Someone asked me to do a little video, so I thought, well, not, why not? Makes it easier. And um, you can do this any way you want. I'm gonna try to get, get some stripes. So I'm gonna try to go back and forth. It's been a while since I've done stripes. And that gave it a cool look, huh? And the, what, I know what um, some people might not know, because I know you might be totally new to pouring. I mean, I learned a lot this past year. Is that those tiny little circles you see? Those are like cells. And depending upon what you use and what you mix together, you can create big ones, small ones, webbed ones. I mean, there's all kinds of ways to do it. I don't know if you can see in the little thing, there's like a tiny little bubble right there. Try to blow it out and see. Nope, I can't get that out yet, but I'm gonna try to blow it out though there. And that really went nice around the edges. If I had a nice, um, I guess I could use like um, something, I know they use heat little blasters and it kind of spreads everything out, but it's really doing the work for me. I mean, I just stepped away for a minute and turned it and now it like really spread. So I'm try to blow on it and get different results. Sometimes not even just the heat, just blowing on it itself spreads out the look. But i um, pretty content the way that looks. And that paint is perfect for a transfer rock. Um, shoot, my rocks are outside. Let me grab one really quickly. That paint is too good to not make use of it. Then I can show you my clutter in here really quick. This is called Crazy Town. I have projects that are underway. And then in these cases, I have the rocks that are ready to go. So wherever I go, I can take my case with me out where I go. And uh, I don't want to show you too much of my mess in the garage, but I'm going to grab, I'm trying to grab a nice flat rock so I can do a transfer really quick. Okay, I put this here. Let me grab a brush. Sorry, I'm making you guys dizzy. Don't mean to. Brush is not great. Let's see. Sorry guys, bear with me. Didn't plan on doing that transfer, but that paint is so lovely. I think you guys will like the results on it. Okay, now let's see if it changed or anything. Oh my, oh my, oh my. And see how it has all kinds of teeny tiny cells in there? I mean, that's what I'm talking about. Those were those are beautiful. So let's do a quick little transfer rock. And I don't use a spatula because when I use a spatula, it's almost like I'm just scooping it up and pouring it. So it's really not a transfer. Transfer is with your brush. You use a nice flat brush and you just scoop underneath. You just pick it up and then you lay it on top. So a transfer is just laying the paint on top with the brush. Now, like if you use a spatula, that's not a transfer. That's a, that's like a pour pretty much because you're really pouring a good amount back on there. But this one, you're just scooping it, kind of laying it over. And as you lay it over, it kind of makes a design as you're going. So it's kind of cool. So that looks pretty neat. Looks like a marble. Sometimes the best rocks that I make or the ones that I'm most happy with are the ones that I did transfers on. Because see how cool that is? Look at all that color. Really pops. And that's why I really love the color shift. And sometimes, I, most of the time, I use white with it. Because somehow white always helps to bring that color out and help everything blend pretty. I do get excited when looking at the extra paint that's around the edges. And the reason I mainly pour flat is because if I did pour on a rack, this paint would slowly swoop down the rack and then it would change colors. It remains at a darker color if I keep it right here where it's poured. Like I said, so if other people pour on racks or on cups, that's great, but the excess paint flows down and loses its color. Whereas if you pour flat, I know it seems it's not pretty, but it really makes the color stay darker than when you pour on a rack. So I'm not trying to sell you on the foil, but you get a better excess paint, better use of that. Okay, last one. Let me try to scoop a little bit of paint back in this cup. I'm doing it with one hand, so it's not that helpful, but 
I do want to show some of you that might think this is a little waste of paint. It's not. I mean, all the paint that you see underneath, and this is going to be for the next hour. For the next hour, every 20 minutes or so, I'm going to go underneath the rock and make sure that it's not sitting in a puddle. So just because it sits flat doesn't mean I don't check and make sure everything's clean underneath there. Just trying to put a good amount back in. And then this next pour, because I have a good amount in the cup, I'm just going to keep going over it and seeing what, whoa, seeing what design I get. Okay, so let's go. Let's see what happens with this one. I'm going to try to go around the top, keeping the stripe look on it, because the colors float really nice in there. Just kind of going around. I'm keeping the paint going until it runs out, just so you guys can watch the design go. Hopefully it turns into something pretty. All right. Okay, I'm just gonna scroll up. So I miss anybody? Hi, Tracy. Hi, Tanya. Hi, Linda. So I'm really happy with this, and I'm really happy with this product and I always like doing things that are not the same thing that everybody does or you know I mean use the same products that every pourer uses I mean I'll go with the weird stuff like just odd things to make and enhance the colors you know so that's pretty cool I was pretty happy with that and I always try to do things as less toxic as possible because I am all about not breathing in bad stuff because some of this paints pretty strong so Whatever else you use, you just don't want to keep the lower mess you're breathing up. We don't want that to happen. This one makes me think of Mags as a rainbow pour. So glad I was able to make something like that because she made some. If you guys haven't caught it, maybe look up her um, rainbow pour because she did an awesome rainbow pour. This I'm totally entranced by. Let's hear. Let's hope you guys say a little prayer for me. I don't stick my knuckle in there because. You always seem to get a knuckle sandwich in your best pores. It just happens. Once it happens to you, you'll get over it and it'll make it easier for the next time. Looks like I missed some paint in this little spot. I'm just gonna grab, grab some from underneath. Try to lay it on top. Looks like, looks like a ghost right there. Look right here. Doesn't that look like a ghost? Ooh, I don't know. Maybe I should just cover that up. It looks a little scary. There we go. I don't like seeing scary stuff in there. Oh, I'll, sh I'll show you what colors I used to achieve this. Let's see. Thank you, Linda, for reminding me. So I used this white Americana, and this color is Aqua Flash, a uh, blue violet flash and orange flash and I have a load of them let me just show you really quick while I'm on the line with you guys majority of all these are color shift so I do love me some color shift and yesterday I just separated my greens my blues my pinks and then red yellow and an orange I think is in this cabinet over here with some bronze colors so that's the rest of my stash, along with a little bit of extra stuff up here. Kathy, it did look like a ghost, huh? Seriously, it scared me. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys these one more time. And if you missed this, just go back and watch. I did show at the beginning how I mixed the white in, and the white with the Moroccan was what gave these pretty cells. Now, if I did not use the Moroccan and the white, I still would have got a pretty, um, I would have got really cool stripes anyways, but these little cells or webs are achieved with that. I try not to buy the expensive things or different things I think will dull my paint color, and I really think that this oil that I got by accident really does some cool stuff. This one's a keeper. I'm not giving it up. Unless I get my knuckle in it, then I'll give it away. I'm just kidding. That's the back of them. Okay, cutting out. Just really wanted to tell people about 
how to mix those together, make it easy so it doesn't seem complicated in that way. They'll try it. And um, if you know anybody that's needing to see this, make sure to tag them. If not, I'll try to um, link it to the post where people were asking. All right. You guys have a wonderful afternoon and enjoy your day. I am going to enjoy my baby's nap time right now and try to finish this up. And um, you guys have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.